Hey guys, Dave from Gorilla Painting here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the resin exclusive models from Dungeon Saga. So these were add-ons which you could purchase during the Kickstarter campaign, and they're resin casts of the masters um, for the pieces which were then turned into uh, Dungeon Saga board game pieces. So this was my Kickstarter pledge. We had the Masters of Evil, which is these four here, and then a couple of extra miniatures over this side. So I'm really happy with how these have turned out. The cast themselves have come out absolutely beautifully. Um, as most of you will know, I've worked with a lot of Forge World models in the past, and some other um, resin companies as well. And uh, these definitely stack up with all of them. Um, they're very, very clean, not much, not much flashing on them. Uh, there's very little to remove in the way of wastegates and uh, very little mold lines to tidy up. So let's take a look at each model individually. So firstly here is Mortibris. Um, so he's the necromancer who is the main bad guy in Dungeon Saga. And he's seen here summoning a skeleton through the cobblestones. So this comes in three pieces. You get the base, you get the skeleton, and then you get Mortibris. And his arm needs to get glued on as well. That's all the assembly that's required. Some very, very nice detail here, especially in on the face. Um, it's cast perfectly on that. Um, he's holding a book. He's got a really nice looking belt. Um, some sort of woven detail into his cloak and stuff. The skeleton looks, looks cool. It's got some tattered clothing. Um, good, crisp, crisp, clean detail. Um, you've got a little bit of a mold line here to clean up, but not too much. And yeah, the hair looks pretty nice. I've got a little bit of filling in work to do on this cloak, but that will be something which I'll just do with some uh, Vallejo plastic putty, and it will look really good um, after that. Next we have the Banshee. Um, now this has a name, um, but I don't have the Dungeon Saga set next to me, so I can't remember what it is. Um, but yeah, some nice ethereal detail, um, sort of tattered clothes um, falling off the back. It's a little bit of um, tidy up work to do just on the edge here. And there's a couple, where can I find them? There's a couple of small little bubbles in the hair cast in there, but um, as it's an ethereal model, um, when it's painted up, I'm probably actually going to leave them as they are um, because it will add to the overall effect. But it's a good level of detail on that, um, good movement in the positioning, and this is going to look really cool when it's done. And we have the Dwarven Revenant King. So this is one of my favourite models. Sort of missing his entire chest cavity where it's been stoved in. Um, perhaps that was what killed him in the past. He's got this little uh, sort of belt buckle here. Raggedy cloaks. I like the fact that the sh the toe of his shoe has uh, busted through. And you can see his uh, skeleton toes inside the centre there. And then he's sort of holding back uh, this Warhammer. So this piece here had to get glued on. And there's a little bit of tidy up work to do on the Warhammer itself, um, just where the mold lines come through the center there. But nothing much um, to be done tidying up wise. A um, couple, a little bit of sanding and stuff required around here. But it's a very cool, very characterful model. And then we have the big guy. So this is the zombie troll shaman. So I love this model. It's one of my favorite pieces from Dungeon Saga. It's got heaps of detail. He's got this uh, sort of little rat skeleton thing on the back of him. Really nice looking cloak, sort of stitched in holes and raggedy stuff. Um, sort of rotting skin with the little uh, feather tokens and bone fetishes and stuff. And then uh, the sort of hooded head with uh, missing the lower jaw, so the tongue just sort of dangles down. And then he's got the, uh, the staff with this bone sort of lashed to it. So this is a great piece. I've done most of the tidy up work on this already. Um, there's a little bit of a mold line through this piece. And then there's a few small mold lines in, coming in down here. But I just spent about 5-10 minutes um, with a file and a modeling knife and just scrape those out and smooth them down. And it's come up really nice and clean. So those were the Masters of Evil. Next up we have my individual pieces. So firstly we have the Tyrant King Blaine. So Blaine is kind of Mantic's Kickstarter mascot. He's been uh, in all of them since the 
Dreadball, which was their second one, I believe. Um, again, nice, good characterful model. Good level of detail in the sculpt, and the casting of it is pretty pretty good. Um, not too much in the way of mold lines in here. There's a little bit of one down the cloak. Um, do note that I did snap off the front of the spear um, because it was a little bit bent, and I was just testing to see how much I needed to straighten it out and ended up snapping it off. Um, I should have heated it up first before I uh, started playing with it. I always have a tendency to um, do that a little bit too quickly sometimes and snap things off, but I'll just put a little bit of green stuff in here to tidy it up. And there's a little bit of a mold line just in underneath the spear there um, and a little bit on the bottom of the cloak. But aside from that, it's a very, very clean, crisp, clear cast. And the final miniature I got is this vampire. So he's beautifully smooth. Um, the only mold lines I could find was this little one coming across the shoulder pad here. And that's about it. Um, very nice, nicely done. There's a little bit of sanding I need to do on that edge of the cloak. Um, but the level of detail on this one's beautiful. It does sort of show how it's been done. Um, it's definitely a CAD sculpt just in terms of how the, uh, the edges of the plate and stuff are done. But uh, for Vampire, it looks very nice. There's a good level of detail on his head. You can see the fangs, sort of pronounced eyes. You see this little um, bat head on the helm. Um, and really nice chainmail detail and stuff inside here. So beautiful, beautiful resin models, these ones. And like I said at the beginning, I'm really impressed with just how clean they are, how little... Um, a little time I'm going to have to spend getting rid of any mold lines and stuff like that. So Mantic have done a fantastic job on these. It's comparable with the models I've got from uh, companies like Albino Rhino or um, in a lot of cases this is way better than um, some of the stuff which I've had from Forge World. So uh, thanks for watching guys. Uh, let me know what you think of these models and of uh, the Dungeon Saga stuff as a whole um, because I really think that uh, Mantic has well and truly upped their game on these ones. So until next time guys, happy modeling!